my mom's time was very different. And I watch I Love Lucy today, and I'm like, that's what I grew up in. You know, the women were subservient. The Ricky was the breadwinner, and Lucy was could never have a career because you know she had to. Oh, Ricky, I just and um, Laura and Rob did it too. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, uh, my mom, if she was. She struggled because I think she never could find her true self in that, but her, but like truly what she wanted to do in life. But she was truly a kind and compassionate human being. So she basically, you know, that's what I got from her. My dad saved all the animals. I'm pretty sure that's where it started. Um, I there's a photo of me when I was about probably five years old and I have a red wagon and it's got about 10 puppies in it. I have no idea what happened that day and I'm wearing a triangle paper hat and I don't know like what happened, where I'd been, why I had a wagon load of puppies, but I used to come home with animals all the time and my dad would be like, fuck no you can't have a dog, which one do you want? You know and um, and then my mom was always just sort of the um, she just sort of went along with things. She, but she was tough too. There's pictures of her when she was younger. I've got some great photos of her uh, with a. I don't, I'd love to know the story behind these uh, in Thurber Mineral Wells, Texas. Those places I told you in small Texas towns with these women, and they're doing like, they're doing these like powerful moves. And I thought, what was happening then? And I didn't really because my mom had me when she was uh, she was 42 years old, so I didn't get a young mom. But I, but I loved my mom. My mom already had the history behind her. So, and to have some, to give birth at 42 in the 50s, you know, that was kind of crazy. Uh, but she did it. And um, I found her very powerful for just that. And then she always encouraged me to be who I was and to be true to myself. And, um, and uh, you know, she still sort of let my dad rule the roost basically be, because that's just how conditioned people were um, during that time. So yeah, she was a very powerful human being, but she was also, her power was very quiet. She wasn't, I mean, yeah, she could go Italian on you for sure. She really was always very steady on some level, you know, and she just kept me, she had a calm. And then as she got older and I started caring for her because then she couldn't walk. She developed uh, like a, a sort of a Parkinson's-like disease and um, she really couldn't get around. So I tried to take care of her and then, you know, it became I couldn't work and do that at the same time, which is a, a situation that we all, all face here, I think, at some point. And so I found this, we were living in Seattle at the time. I moved my parents there with me at the time. I moved, I lived there for about five years. and. My dad passed away during that time of lung cancer, and so I took care of my mom. I took care of him f for about a few months of his life there, and then um, after he passed, you know, they'd been together forever, so she really needed me, and we, you know, we got even closer, you know, because we were all we had of our immediate family. And so we did a lot of great things in those late years, you know, where we went and drove around Seattle and looked at eagles and sometimes the eagles actually weren't there. My mom thought she saw eagles and we'd be like, yeah, mom, those are eagles. <laughs> um, we'd go to the, see the flowers and just like tried to have the quality that we didn't get to experience with my dad in the world uh, because he was more of a workhorse and he was, he had, it was very uh, regimented in his schedule and he always got up at three o'clock in the morning to go to the restaurant and then he'd come home exhausted, and so he worked hard, and, uh, but she sort of lived her life around him. And then when we got those last five years together, um, it was pretty amazing because we got to rediscover each other in a way. Yeah. Marie, she was amazing. 